Let's take a look at the process of solving side-side angle triangles. Solving a triangle like this is complicated by the fact that there could be two solutions or there could be no solutions at all. Uh, there could also be just one solution. To see you know, why that is, uh, with the given information, the angle, uh, looking at the problem that we're given, the angle of 48 degrees and the side length 10, they kind of fix a, a picture here that requires the, the point up here at point B to be at least a certain distance away from the opposite side, from the side uh, B. And we can figure out what that shortest possible distance would be because this distance, it's going to be 10 times the sine of 48 degrees which turns out to be roughly 7.43. So a side length 8 is going to give me two solutions because the side length 8, it could drop down to the other side in, in sort of a slightly longer position where the value for B is going to be kind of bigger, um, or it could fall on the inside. Uh, because 8 is a little bit less than 10, uh, it could fall on the inside, and so we could have a solution where 8 is out here or where 8 um, is in there. And so we could have a shorter length for B and a smaller angle for angle B. So this would be the situation of two possible solutions. Looking at a second diagram, because I know that shortest distance has to be at least 7.43, if the given third side was only 7 units long, it wouldn't actually be able to reach uh, all the way across. It, it wouldn't be able to make it to that uh, side B. Um, and so in that case, if, if this uh, given side is too short, there are no solutions. And to think about the third possibility, we could get one solution if, uh, if this other side is exactly 7.43, given our arrangement with 10 as the other given side and 4.8, uh, we could get sort of a perfect right triangle and then there would only be one solution. Or, you know, probably more often what's going to happen is if the side that's opposite that angle is longer, uh, let's say that was 18 instead of 10, then the side length 18, if I tried to swing it to the other side, it would end up over here, um, and then that's not going to give me uh, a second solution. So let's try to solve this, uh, this given example. We know from the diagram, I hope you guys agree, that there are going to be two solutions. And to find those two solutions, we could either use the law of sines or the law of cosines. I'd like to use the law of cosines. So since we're given angle A, I'm going to write it in terms of angle A. The law of cosine says a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2b times c times cosine of angle A. And because we're given one angle and two of the three sides, we know everything in that formula except for b. So I get 8 squared, because 8 is opposite the given angle, so that's side A equals b squared is unknown, plus 10 squared, minus 2 times 8, I'm sorry, 2 times b, times 10, uh, again, b is unknown, sorry about that, uh, times cosine of 48 degrees. And so essentially what we have here is a quadratic equation, where I have a b squared term, I have some constant terms, and I have a b term. So let me rewrite that in the more usual form. Uh, I have b squared. Uh, 8 squared is 64, 10 squared is 100. If I subtract those, I get a, a positive 36. And then in front of the b term, I have a negative 20 times cosine of 48 degrees times b. And since I moved everything to one side, I can set that equal to 0. Of course, it, I guess it's more usual for us to say uh, b squared minus 20 cosine of 48 degrees times b plus 36. Putting the terms in descending order. So 
you know, with something like cosine of 48 degrees, this is not going to factor nicely, but we can use the quadratic formula. So normally we think of the quadratic formula with, where the variable equals x. So let me make that change to hopefully make things a little bit easier to see. So I'm just changing that variable b to x so that the formula you know, kind of makes uh, a little bit more sense, I hope. So, so our formula, you know, something like this, the solutions for x are going to come from taking uh, the coefficient that's in front of the x term, which we usually call b. I'm going to take minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Um, where the, the coefficient in front of the x squared is a, and the constant term is, is c. So this is a little bit different than the a, b, and c. You know, this is not the same as the a, b, and c that we saw in the triangle diagram, but this is kind of the traditional way of writing the quadratic formula. So to solve for our variable, um, x is equal to, well, I have a minus sign in front, so that's going to become a positive 20 times cosine of 48 degrees, plus or minus the square root of that whole thing squared, 20 times cosine of 48 degrees squared, minus 4ac. Of course, 4 is just one, uh, a is just 1, so I get minus 4 times 1 times 36, all of that divided by 2. So to enter this into the calculator, I, I do need to be kind of careful about uh, parentheses. I have a whole bunch of stuff in the numerator, so I'm going to put a parenthesis to sort of open up, start that numerator. So I have 20 times cosine of 48. I, I am in degree mode. I want to double check that. Uh, and then let me take the plus side of the formula, plus the square root. And now I'm going to start a parenthesis because I want to square a whole bunch of stuff. So uh, the stuff that I want squared is 20 times cosine of 48. That closes the cosine function. The second parenthesis closes the stuff that I want to be squared. And so I can square that and then subtract 4 times 36 right, from the last term in the formula. So all of that is under the square root. This parenthesis closes the square root. This parenthesis closes the numerator. And then I want to divide by 2. And hitting enter gives us a side length. And that is uh, one of our possible values for b. The other possible value comes from taking that same expression, and, and I brought that expression back onto my calculator by using the entry command, which is the second command above enter, so I don't need to retype all of that. Um, I can bring it back onto the screen and then change the plus sign here to a minus to get that other solution. Now, if there had only been one solution, this would have turned into a negative number and then we would have known that that wouldn't make sense. Uh, but because it's positive, I know I have the situation that, we, that I described a moment ago where I have you know, two positive values for b. If we were in this situation, and we can look at that in a moment, if we were in this situation, then we would have a negative value would, would come out for b here. And so we would know that you know, that, that wouldn't make sense. Uh, but we have two possible solutions. Uh, going back into the triangle notation, what we just found using the calculator uh, is that b, the, the side length b, so let me write that to distinguish it from the, the quadratic formula uh, value for b, the side length b could either be 9.65, let me say 9.653, uh, or 3.729 the larger value is going to give us a triangle that looks you know a little something like this where we have side length 10 and 9.653 uh, and, and a side length 8. The smaller value is going to give us an equally valid solution where we have side lengths 10 and 8 and then 3.729. Because we have all three sides and, and one of the angles, we could actually use the law of sines to figure out what uh, one of the other angles uh, has to be and then, uh, and then use the, uh, 
fact that all three angles have to add up to 180 to find you know, all of the angles. So let's, let's do that to try to complete uh, the problem here. Now it's best, when we're working with the law of sines, it's best to try to find the smallest possible angle. Um, and so in this first problem, the smallest possible angle, actually for both of these, the smaller angle is going to come from, you know, it's going to be angle B, the angle that's opposite the, the side length that we just found. So let's try to figure this out. So I know that the side length 8 divided by sine of 48, that has to be the same ratio as the side length 9.653 uh, divided by sine of angle B. And so moving things around here, we end up with uh, sine of angle B equals 9.653 times sine of 48 divided by 8. So I know that sine inverse of all of that stuff uh, is going to give me the value that I need. So sine inverse of 9.653 times sine of 48 divided by 8 equals the angle that I'm looking for. So angle B in that first solution is 6 uh, 63.7 degrees. So that's for the first solution with a side length uh, of 9.653. For the second solution we're going to get a similar equation but instead of 9.653 we have uh, 3.729. So that other possible solution, I simply want to change this to 3.729. Um, the other values stay the same. And so the second possibility for the angle, and it is a smaller angle, which makes sense, it should be a smaller angle, is you know, roughly 20.3. So the final answer involves kind of two sets of values. We were given that A equals 48 degrees, angle A equals 48 degrees, side A is 8, and side uh, C was also given as 10. Based on that set of given information, there are two possible solutions. So option 1, we found, was um, a side length for B of 9.653. And in that case, then angle B is a little bit larger than the given angle. Uh, angle B was um, 63.7 degrees. And so then the other angle has to be 180 degrees minus 63.7 plus 48, so that they all add up to 180. So the angle opposite uh, side C, angle C, is 68.3. Side C is the biggest side, and so it makes sense that angle C would be the biggest angle. Option 2, the second solution, is that the side length B is 3.729, and in that case we found that the angle B is roughly 20.3 degrees, and angle C, doing a similar calculation, but this time using 20.3 instead of 63.7, we get a value for angle C of 111.7 degrees. So we get two possible solutions to the triangle. I encourage you to take a few minutes and work on the following questions. These are all side-side angle arrangements where we're given two side lengths and then one of the angles that's opposite one of the sides. So you might want to take a few minutes and use the law of cosines process to try to solve these triangles to, to see if there are solutions. Again, there could be possibly two solutions, or one solution, or no solutions at all. There is also a way to use law of sines to solve these sorts of problems. And so um, in a textbook, perhaps, or uh, in a separate video, you might be able to find information about how to use the law of sines to solve these types of tr uh, problems, and, and if that seems a friendlier approach, uh, feel free to, to try to think about that. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.